All right, so welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to U-Boat. This is the third part, or part three, of the third patrol. So obviously, we did not accomplish the optional mission in parts so we couldn't find that fifth gun. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not risking getting depth charged again. We got depth charged three times. Once from the air, twice from the Corvettes. And there was an MTB as well, which also tried to uh, depth charge us. So basically, it's pretty much impossible to get down there. Plus the fact the uh, the map was lying about the depth. So we could have gone in there at uh, periscope depth. But I didn't know that. Alright, so you see the weather's quite bad. So yeah, thanks to the uh, Tunis radar detector suite. We avoided getting there attacked for the most part. Well, however, we are now heading out of the channel, we're heading west. We are accompanied by a Type 7C, just to the south, just over there where I'm looking. Just slightly in visual range, we can't quite see it because it's pitch black. And it's also the weather doesn't help, it's raining. So we're heading west, and we're going to head into the western approaches. Once we arrive there, I'm going to... Uh, Dive down, let Newman use his uh, hydrophones and catalogue all the uh, merchants, all the shipping movement movements in the uh, in the area. We don't need to set the ones we want. And I'm going to say how many we can actually take down. We're going to go back, hopefully with dry torpedo tubes and dr at least a dry deck gun. We're also going to uh, be using the HE and the AP rounds on the flat gun. To take down some merchants, we have to get close enough to them, obviously, just like before. We'll see it's exactly how many we can actually bag in this patrol. Just to make up for the, uh, well, the rather disappointing second mission we uh, failed on. Okay, so we're approaching the western approaches. Approaching the Celtic Sea. Uh, something they haven't done yet with this, uh, well actually in the uh, entire series, we have not tested our depth. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to replot this, I'm going to leave this section off till we actually arrive here. So we're going to test our depth. Normal lighting. We have 119 meters. We've got eight. What? Well, that eight meter depth right now. So, I'm gonna continue at uh, one third along our actual present course. I'm gonna go to 100 meters. Going to the Echo Echo Sound. We've got just over 100 meters. 100 meters. So we're going to head to 100 meters. This is as much a test of the U-boat. It's one of the first things the skipper actually in real life did. Especially with the new U-boat, they tested what their um, maximum depth was. You usually tell when your maximum depth has been reached in the fact that it caused an implosion and kills everyone. Well, they do get a warning not long before that, when you start losing rivets being popped out, rather like bullets being fired on the inside of the uh, the submarine. Hundred meters shouldn't be a problem. It's it's amber. Anything below there becomes amber. Or say hundred and fifty meters and above hundred and sixty meters. You start to uh, approach the red. At which point it's anyone's guess as to how long you're going to last for in this red zone. So I think I'm going to assign one of the officers to so the dive planes. I forget about loaning the torpedoes. I just like to keep him busy because he keeps going back to his bunk all the time and doing nothing. There we are. So we're 
So we're at 100 meters. So that is correct. Now there shouldn't be. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not too clever to have someone up here when you're testing crush depth. But I don't think we're to crush, test the crush depth anyway. But uh, let's be able to uh, evacuate this point. And that's something about section view, which is different to first person. Now, according to the developers, you can play them in both one or the other. Or both together. I like the way we play through the tutorial. But I prefer first person. The comment going to develop you can play it fully in first person. Well, I can't see how that can be because I can't evacuate this section or any other section. I can't tell the crew not to be in here. I can turn the electrics off on the distribution section, the little panel I showed you. In the previous episode, but uh, I can't actually evacuate the area or tell them to pump out a particular area, which is a bit strange because I should be able to. So, yeah, and there's no way of telling them to evacuate or pump out a particular area in this menu either. So, in out section view. I can't do what I want to do and I shouldn't have to have section view in order to evacuate obviously if you see water on the, uh, the ground sorry the floor yeah it's going to be creaky now isn't it ok let's test the depth we will ignore the, the, uh, the shortcomings right now because obviously it's in beta, so... And really when diving deep these sections should all be so sealed as well. So we still have 20 metres, yeah it said 108 metres. Let's go to 110. Going to see exactly where out. Obviously, right now we can't really test it beyond much beyond 100 meters. Because of the uh, seabed isn't deep enough. Middle of the Atlantic. Western approaches, then, yeah, definitely. Where's that water come from? We've got six there. Nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. So in the control room's got about seven bits of water. That's a bit... Are we seeping? No, don't think so. It's probably from when we had the rain. And it's dripped down through the conning tower. A few seconds on the pump. There we go. Alright, so 110 metres. And it's creaking quite nicely. So I've got 104 minutes and 50 seconds. Now, even though we're going at one third, electric, the batteries themselves will be depleting in 43 minutes, so... That's strange. We using anything? I can't see anything else that needs turning off. Okay, so I'm just clear with two meters. I'm going to come to a full stop. I'm going to sit this. Wir sind schon so lange auf See. Ich halte nicht mehr aus. Yeah, whatever. And um, yeah, so I'm going to sit this on the seabed. 
Because we can't really take a look around because it's obviously in first person mode. But see, if, you, if you play it in section mode, or both FPP and section, you can have a look outside. But see, we can't use the scopes for obvious reasons. Okay, so we have two meters. We are at 110. Oh, down to 112. Seabed. And it puts you back into uh, real time. So that's handy. Don't know why we just rose above 100 metres again and then. Don't smack into the surface. Yeah, I don't know what's happened there. That was very strange. We've now got 8 metres under us. 9 metres. The devil's going on. We're 112. We'll go down 114. We've gone out 115 meters. 100 meter. No, I said 115 meters. So gone on two meters. Only took in one meter off. Oh, there we go. Down to two. Down to six meters now. Five meters. Yeah, don't mind me, will you? Three meters. Let's see, it's possible we could be drifting if they've simulated that. They simulated the drift, which is realistic. You wouldn't just stay in one place. Six meters. So we've got six more meters underneath us. Okay, now it's 120. 100 meters. 120, not 100 meters. See, that's another feature he's uh, sorting out. He just keeps saying 100 meters all the time. Three meters. Nearly there. Diese Routine bringt mich um. Jeden Tag das Gleiche. No, we're not nearly there. Okay, so I've ordered 120 meters, but it seems to be taking its time to get down there. Diese Routine bringt mich um. We seem to be bouncing around quite a lot. And that's something else as well. It only seems to show what you've come actually ordered, not what you're actually at. As far as depth is concerned. I'm thinking maybe the echo sound is like um der Dienst in der Marine hat Tradition in meiner Familie. Depending on where it is along the boats. Underside. It could show like a deep like like a like uh well like little sort of lumps. So it should could show it deeper than it actually is. That's all we're bouncing a little bit. There we go. Strange though. Okay, so I thought I'd take some manual control for a little while with the hydrophones. Identified a propeller noise. Just make that out. Just there. And switch to different frequencies. So on, on low frequency, you're going to pick up all sorts of bass. Medium, not quite so much. So that's mid range sort of sounds.
And we've got something just there as well. And that's the cook on the radio, Leapy. So that's the cook in the galley. So I actually have to look this one for any sort of discrepancies, any changes. Got something just there, actually. There. On there. Is it was a slightly bit so often? Like a shh sound. There. Yes, we've got a lot of traffic. Obviously, we know that the Western approaches is just filled with freighters, but also warships as well. So I have to be careful not to encounter any of those. So that's what we identified. So a minimum of two contacts. So I thought there was more than one contact. So it's uh, two on three. So it's practically crossing. In 225 is uh, 180 is directly south, 225 is southwest. 270 is obviously west, 315 is northwest. So that is just slightly lower, slightly towards the south, south of south at west. So it's slightly further towards 180. And 225. So it's practically coming across our line. So that is just not, oh, that's perfect actually. So we have it's 64 nautical miles. Well, see, it's accelerated time again. I know, my pet hate. I'd like it to be in real time because in situations like this, I like it to be able to track an object from a distance. At this speed, every 10 minutes, 10 minutes is passing roughly about every 10 seconds. So it's just, you just can't play it as realistically as I'd like to. Okay, I'm going to surface. So the cat's onto the uh, conning tower. Tanks unblasen. I'm going to refill the, uh, refill the compressor. And recharge the battery as well. So let's fix the diesels anyway. Can't use them underwater, but once we get to the surface, we'll be able to use them. It's not a problem. New contact aircraft. Oh, that's just great, isn't it? Okay, okay, okay. Out zero, tief again. Tauchen auf 50 meter. 30 meters. Switch to electric. Go to France. We didn't get the uh, chance to uh, refill the compressed tanks. The actual air tanks. Damn aircraft are a nuisance, aren't they? Probably from here. Alright, so we're going to move forward. That's about flank speed. About 30 metres. And then...
We'll keep moving till we know exactly where they are. Well, they are definitely coming for us. Yeah, that'll be the hydrophones picking them up. So it must be quite low. Come on, Captain. Onto one third. I don't know why Gunther's on the radio, because I mean you can't use it underwater. I, I hear Kaloi. Okay. I've got two contacts, but they are the aircraft. We'll maintain thirty meters. Some the aircraft are out of the area. Then we'll maintain thirty meters. And try and reacquire the freighters. Those two. Ah, there we go. So I've got two new propeller contacts. Okay, so the two aircraft have gone over to the east. We've lost contact with them. We have now made contact with the small group or tiny group with at least two ships. So it's almost perfect, the line. So they should cross us about here. So we've just come to periscope depth. Now we have got... It's just a soft surface. So I'm going to do that. We're not, in, we're not in visual range, so we shouldn't have a problem. So I'm going to send the captain. No, we have aircraft. So they've been hanging around waiting for us to surface. Damn it. Oh, well, never mind. Get us back under again. Damn it. So it looks like those waiting for us to surface. Captain? Yep, those waiting for us to surface. Why are we not under yet? Didn't I order that already? I'm pretty sure I did. Well, I'm in visual range, so they could just simply, simply think they've made a mistake. Schneller, schneller. Damn it. So it's going to be well over an hour before they actually arrive into our firing range. I was hoping it was dark enough to be able to. So you have to get away from those aircraft. I didn't realize those aircraft were slinging around. So I should probably have checked with the uh, with the scope first before trying to surface. Bad on to thirty meters. Chief, go back to the boat. Engines, please. Herr Kaloy. Sehr wohl, Herr Kaloy. Wasserbomben. Deck charges. Wasserbomben. On flank speed, Chief. If you don't mind. Why give us full power then? Schneller, schneller. Come on. Flank speed. Schneller, schneller. 
As long as I can get away from the depth charges. Yeah, so they've been they've been hanging around. Now the thing is they've got so it tells me there's an aircraft carrier somewhere near. Okay, so we have the almost perfect intercept line, so I was almost right. We made contact once again. Once we've moved into position where we are now with the two freighters. There's at least two freighters amongst them, from what I can tell. Alright. Scott, they're nowhere near us yet, so. Captain? We'll head to Coma. I'll tell him to uh, leave. Actually, no, I won't. I'll leave it. Because you can actually hide the, um, the scope more effectively than the, uh, the, the rest of the crew. We still have two aircraft hanging around, though. Which is why I'm staying at uh, periscope depth. It's 1520. We've lost our bonus. So we've got minus one for fatigue right now. But it's not causing a problem right now. Not not yet. Auction is fine. We can stay down for... Well, at least another hour. Pointing to uh, ventilate. Can't see these landing. That's fine. Well, it's anything at all. Gyroscope is deactivated, so nothing like that. Compressed air is down to 27% because I surfaced uh, without checking on the periscope and the aircraft on um, charge the depth charges. Two aircraft in this group. Somehow, when we surfaced, it was over here. So, obviously, this is estimated on the last contact that you have. So, if the last time you see, let's say, an aircraft or a ship, it was heading east. When you dive, and that's it, it will project as if it's continued on the east, even though it may have actually changed course after you've lost visual or hydrophone contact with it. So that's something to note. Aircraft especially. Alright, but we've got the two freighters. Well, two contacts, between two and four contacts. I think from what I can tell on the hydrophone, there's two contacts moving at six knots. 